minutes. Only 10. 10 minutes only. Every other speaker, five minutes, strictly. <laughs> Madam Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, of course, I am rising under standing order 33 uh, 1 of the standing orders <coughs> to move this motion. Madam Speaker, as I alluded to earlier on, we are facing uh, unprecedented, unprecedented times in this country. Madam Speaker, it is the first time in the history of this country since we attained our independence way back in 1963 that the government of the Republic of Kenya has failed to pay its workers, specifically civil servants, their salaries. As we speak, we have got thousands and thousands of workers who are yet to receive their March salary. And today we are on the 11th of April, Madam Speaker. And there is no indication as to when these salaries will be paid. If at all, they'll be paid, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we are advised that a nation or a country is like a going concern. It's like a going concern, really. But any time, and accountants here can tell you, any time a going concern fails or defaults in paying its workers, it is basically teetering on bankruptcy. And therefore, it will be safe to say that Kenya is almost becoming bankrupt, if it is not yet bankrupt, Madam Speaker. And this is no idle talk. This is very serious, Madam Speaker. This is very serious, Madam Speaker, that this country is becoming bankrupt as we watch, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it is not just about slightly delays. As we speak, the county governments, the 47 of them, are facing serious financial crunch. Out of the 370 billion shillings, which is the equitable share that was supposed to go to the counties in this financial year, two months before the end of the financial year, only 141 billion shillings has been disbursed, Madam Speaker. And county governments are unable to pay their employees, leave alone providing essential services to the people of this country, Madam Speaker. As a matter of fact, there has been no remittance to the counties for the entire period of January to April this year, which is unprecedented. Even when we had the worst situation of COVID-19, this never happened, Madam Speaker. We would be forgiven to imagine that we are under some threat of war. What possibly could be happening, Madam Speaker? That's the question we're asking this afternoon, Madam Speaker. Above all, above all, nearly all development projects have come to a halt. Have come to a halt. They have ground to a halt on account of lack of money, Madam Speaker. But then the question we're asking, where has the money gone? Madam Speaker, according to the estimates of revenue, grants and loans for the year ending 30th June this year, which we approved in this House last year, KRA had a target of 2.1 trillion shillings to collect in form of tax revenues. As at the end of February, KRA has only been able to collect 1.2 trillion shillings, which essentially amounts to 57% of the target. And yesterday, yesterday you were being told through some unsigned statement, which ostensibly came from KRA in the name of acting Commissioner General. It was unsigned. I believe it was fake. That statement was saying that KRA has been able to collect 95% of its target or, or attain 95% of its original target. That can't be true because the rev tax revenue target can only be approved by this House. And I can confirm to you that even in the supplementary estimates which we passed here a couple of weeks ago, there was no variation in this target of tax revenue, Madam Speaker. And therefore, KRA has fallen short of its target, Madam Speaker. If, if they are disputing this, let them come out tomorrow and dispute these facts. I can tell you. I'll be happy to face them all, all head on. 
Madam Speaker, we have heard contradictory statements emanating from KRA. One from the chairman of the board of directors of KRA, one Anthony Maura. He's on record saying that he's trying to drain the swamp in KRA, that there are officers in KRA who are, who, are, who are predisposed to steal public money, and therefore he has to remove them, Madam Speaker. And yet the statement which supposedly came from KRA yesterday was disputing this fact. So who do, we, who do we believe? Do we believe the KRA Board of Directors Chairman, or do we believe the KRA Commissioner General? Madam Speaker, who do we believe? Who do we believe? Madam Speaker, and if we are to believe the Commissioner General, what the hell is the... The, the, the chairman of the KRA board, who is supposed to be a ceremonial office holder, doing in issuing out executive orders, Madam Speaker. In any case, in any case, Madam Speaker, in any case, Madam Speaker, there are serious integrity issues surrounding the chairperson of KRA. I, I will table a report now. I will table this, therefore. Madam Speaker, on the 5th of October 2022, the Kenya Revenue Authority wrote to the Director, National Water Harvesting and Storage Authority, regarding agency suspension notice on Todi Civil Engineering Company Limited, business number 154472. When I speak, this letter had the effect of shutting down the account of Todi Civil Engineering Company Limited on account of tax evasion. This letter was written on 5th October and signed off by Mr. Paul Kirui, the debt manager, medium taxpayers office, Madam Speaker, Corporate Taxpayer Account Management Division, Domestic Taxes Department. The upshot of this is that even as this gentleman was being appointed as a chairman of the board of directors of KRA, he had issues to do with tax evasion concerning his own company. Madam what's, Speaker. Your, what's your point of order? I am not aware if this issue was ever resolved. Because order, and order, Buandai. Order, 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 Buandai. What is your point of order? Uh, ma Madam Speaker, the leader of minority is discussing a letter which is not in, uh, in circulation, which he has not tabled before this house. And therefore, I think he ne you can't bring a document that is not uh, been tabled before the Madam Speaker. So I think it's out of order to, to discuss something that is not tabled before this House. Hi. You know, Honorable Kosti knows very well. Order. That, have, that have been in this house long enough. Order, Honorable Andai. No, just as long as I have also been here, my friend. Order. Order, Honorable no, Andai. No, 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 no. Order. Order, Honorable Andai. Regardless of how long we have been in this house, I think we should follow our standing orders. Ensure that any document you refer to is substantiated and also refer to your own motion on the issues that we are discussing substantiate and it has to be tabled and be property of the house if it should be discussed. Hi. When I'm speaker, I table. You can scrutinize it. And I've got extra copies here for Honorable Pokosi and the rest. Madam Speaker, my time is not yet even halfway. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, even if we were to assume that the KRA is right in their suggestion that they ever achieve their target, then where is the money? Next week, I'll be coming back here to discuss more about national treasury, Madam Speaker. And therefore, it behoves the KRA and the national treasury to tell us where our taxpayers' money has gone. Because for the first time in this country, we are failing to meet our very basic obligations as a country. Madam Speaker, as we speak, there is a threat already issued of the entrenchment of hapless, poor civil servants. Madam Speaker, it was issued last night by none other than the, the chairman of the Economic Advisory, whatever. Madam Speaker, 
Madam Speaker, David Ndi had the audacity to say that he is going to recommend retrenchment of poor civil servants. How dare you retrench poor workers? How dare you retrench poor hustlers while recruiting and appointing unnecessary number of CASs? How dare you retrench workers while creating offices for your spouses? How dare you retrench poor workers Honorable while buying cars, expensive Konga. cars and machines? What is your point of order? Honorable what is, what? Member for uh, uh, I, I, rise, I rise pursuant to starting order number 91. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, uh, standing order number 91, its heading says responsibility for statement of fact. Madam Speaker, uh, I have just noticed when I just walked in, I was shown this document which has been circulated to members and it is reportedly tabled by uh, the Honorable uh, Awandai, the Minority Leader. It's a letter that is addressed to the Director of National Water Harvesting and Storage Authority. It talks about agency suspension notice to the Civil Engineering Company Limited. Madam Speaker, I was at the House Business Committee. I've looked at the motion of the Minority Leader. This, this letter has no relevance at all to the motion that he's prosecuting and purporting to execute. Would I, would I be in order? Would I be in order, Madam Speaker? Would I be in order, Madam Speaker? Would I be in order, Madam Speaker? You know, the, 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 the difference between me and uh, the Honorable John Badi is that uh, he's a lawmaker and I'm a lawyer. So I, I multitask. So I multitask. So, and this is not your relevant field. You are field. I'm both a lawmaker and a lawyer, so you better listen to me. Listen first. So, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker. Wind up on the point of order, yes, Honorable. Would I be in order? You know, you know, the only thing, Madam Speaker, is people shouting at you. You know, you know every, every civilized, civilized community listens. In fact, they say, if, if, he, if he reads the Bible, the Bible says, listen. The Bible says, listen. So, you, order. you, you know, people need order, to listen. Order, Honorable Konga. You know, one of the virtues of wisdom, one of the virtues of wisdom order. is listening. Order, Honorable Chef so, 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 Mar if you have a point of order, please prosecute the point of order so that we are orderly. Yes, so that we are in, you have one minute, finish up. Ma Madam Speaker. You know, the Honorable one day cannot purport to be standing and interrupting me when, in my, when I'm raising a point of order. He cannot be the one concluding. On, honorable Speaker. You are already on your feet, Honorable, honorable, honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. This purported notice has no relevance at all to the motion that is being moved by the Honorable one day. And would I be in order, Madam Speaker, to request the Honorable one day to withdraw or you expand this particular purported tabling of documents that are irre irrelevant to the motion, that it be completely be taken out of this debate. I thank you. Madam, our speaker, I was getting worried that Honorable Chap Konga is usurping your power and mandate. Madam Speaker, I am very much relevant because I am talking about failure of the government of Kenya to meet its financial obligations which failure is attributable to possible theft of money. Possible theft of money. And therefore, at the core of this theft could be integrity. The integrity of those who are in charge of KRA. Order. And the National Treasury. Order, Honorable Andai. So I am perfectly in order. Order, Honorable Andai. Order. I, I was actually going through your motion. Please take your seat. I was going through your motion. And I was also going through the letter that you have tabled because we are a house of order, we are a house of debate. And this one, the letter you have tabled is uh, actually directed to National Water Harvesting and Storage Authority. Let us adhere to the rules of debate. This matter, if it's an issue of, um, of companies, we have committees in this house. In fact, all the oversight committees are led by the minority side. So I would actually say that the relevance to this, what we are discussing today, 
it, there is no congruence at all. There is no congruence. So I would... Other members, other members, other members, order. It is okay to ventilate, but this is a house of record. I would, I will direct that you withdraw this letter, officially and formally, and prosecute your motion. You have a balance of two minutes, and then we will have five minutes for every member. Speaker, let, let me say this. If you find this letter inadmissible, you can simply go ahead and expunge it. But I can't withdraw it, you know. You know very well. <laughs> you know, I, I am not the person who can do irregular things. This letter is at the core of the issues in KRA. And I want you to confirm or disapprove the fact Honourable that Chef this Konga. company belongs to the chairman of the KRA board of directors. Honorable Chep Konga, what is your point of order? Madam Speaker, this is, this is a house of rules. I rise pursuant to standing order number 91. You know, this house of rules. You know, when the minority leader, who is supposed to observe decorum in this house and rules of procedure, and then threatens the speaker and tells the speaker, you can overrule me, but I'm not going to withdraw. That, 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 that in itself, Madam Speaker, is throwing, and, is, and you, know, you know, Madam Speaker, how, how can we listen to a, a senior leader of, of the standing of Honorable Wandai threatening the speaker and Order, Honorable, Honorable Jeff Conga, I will persuade you to tell you I'm actually, no, I'm also a seasoned uh, politician. I am not a new member in this house. So I do not actually need protection, but I will actually need Honorable Pio Wandai to actually adhere to that ruling. You will withdraw this letter, you will continue with the motion, and we will continue with the debate, and the rules of relevance will be adhered to. Mad Madam Speaker, you can only withdraw a statement you have made on the, on the floor of the House, if it is inappropriate. You cannot withdraw a document. A document, if it's not admissible, you just expunge. <laughs> just expunge. And therefore, I'm not withdrawing anything. Madam Speaker, I conclude now. Order, order that, members. Yes. I therefore rule that yes. this document is not admissible fine, and will fine, be expunged fine, from the records fine, of the House. Fine. Fine. Madam Speaker, let me conclude. Let me conclude that we cannot run away from the problems we are facing as a country. The government which is in power cannot run away from the problems that face the country by continuously, by continuously scapegoating, by continuously backpassing to the old regime. There is this now, this tired narrative of the handshake regime, handshake, handshake government. It is on record that there has never been a government known as handshake in this country. The past government was led by none other than Uhuru Migai Kenyatta and deputized by none other than William Samoy Ruto. For five good years, you must take responsibility for the good things that that government did and also own up for the bad deeds of that government. You cannot scapegoat. You cannot continue to find a scapegoat in Raila Amolo Odinga. We must caution you that that scapegoating will... Your time is up. This debate, for those who have just come in, we will have five minutes for every member. Anytime you get a chance, you have five minutes. We will start with the member for Endebes, Honorable Robert Pukose. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker,